Tom, right? And uh, so if you like pigeons, guess what? You can join a club. And so we're, we're here with Greg Cap, and you are with uh, your Connecticut's pigeon expert. And I'm reading this. The hunt, you're the honcho at the Fair Count Pigeon Club. Correct. Right. Okay. And th I had no idea that there was a pigeon club anywhere, let alone here. Well, pigeons are a pretty old hobby. I mean, uh, pigeons have been domesticated since, well, they're one of the earliest domesticated animals. Yeah. They were, uh, you know, brought in. Uh, Noah had pigeons on his ark. I guess he must have, uh, right? That's right. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, in early days in the Olympics, they used to release pigeons. They kept pigeons and released them for uh, uh, messaging uh, to, to let everyone know who the winners were. Uh, throughout the later, uh, Genghis Khan kept pigeons. I mean, all the great warriors kept pigeons for, you know, racing and homing pigeons for, uh, to carry messages all over the country and world. The, uh, you hear uh, that little dude? You got some proud lineage. Yeah. The, uh, he knows. yeah. <laughs> in, in the current times, in the 19th centuries and that, we've, uh, been using them, uh, a lot of times during the, uh, wars, the Great World War I, World War II, they were used to carry messengers, messages. G.I. Joe basically was a, a famous uh, awarded messenger, saved the lost okay. battalion during the First World War. Uh, that was, sorry, that was Cherami. And uh, G.I. Joe uh, saved probably a thousand or, or more than a thousand villagers in the town of you know, one of the uh, Ital Italian towns during the Second World War. And there's probably as many uh, Dickens medals awarded by the English for okay. pigeons as there are for dogs or for, any other for animal. For heroism, right? For heroism. So what do, as, as a collector of pigeons, first of all, how many do you have? And this guy up here, by the way, he's walking around thinking he's Sam Cantrell, I noticed. Well, you know, he's sticking out his chest. He's, he's calling a, he's a cocky that's guy. That's a pygmy powder, and he's a pretty proud guy, so he, you know, <laughs> he likes to strut his Hence stuff. Hence the Sam Cantrell. Yeah. So. And, and, and so when you, how many do you have? Uh, we keep usually about 60 birds in the backyard. And really? uh, my son and, and grandsons, and you know, we all have a, a group of birds scattered around. But uh, uh, typically, a fancier will keep anywhere from a few, you know, a couple of birds to to maybe 50, 60 birds, somewhere up in that area. We we break out the the hobby itself into like three different areas. Okay. The first the first area is, is basically uh, what we call performing areas. Performing areas are where we would have uh, birds like racing pigeons. Uh, rollers, which basically fly in the sky in your backyard and yeah. tumble on down, okay, uh, and do oh, a little so acrobatics. aerobatics. Yep, wow. exactly. Uh, or high flyers that stay up in the air for for numerous hours. You know, as long as there's sunlight, they'll stay up in the air. We've got the show pigeons. A lot of these here are show pigeons, uh, basically bred like you would say an AKC dog show, where you have uh, people come in and uh, uh, judge the birds based on uh, standard of perfection. Uh, each each one of these you know birds has its own standard of perfection, like a like a uh, like a, uh, a German Shepherd or a Poodle or any of the other uh, breeds of, of dogs or cats. Wow. Same thing in pigeons. There's about 200 different breeds of pigeons. It's it's, it's fascinating. So and how did so you could, the the proper term is a fancier? Is that right? I think I heard you say. Yeah, a pigeon, pigeon fancier. fancier. And how does somebody join your group? By the way, uh, we've got a website. Uh, uh, basically, faircountclub.com. Uh, fair uh, it's up on the web. We also ha have a, a pretty good sized show of about uh, 100 or plus birds over at the Orange Country Fair in, uh, during the month of September. Uh, plus, we show, we have our, uh, our own show, which is an annual show, which is usually held in Ansonia, and we'll have anywhere from 500 to 1,000 birds at the show. How do you now? Do you do any homing activities with them, like training them to? Well, to be some of these, some of the birds up like this one right above my shoulder here, is uh, it, that one's a racing homer, and uh, basically he's bred for perfection, not necessarily to, to be a good-looking bird, but but to be bred for performance. So they're smarter than they. Not, no offense, but they're smarter than they look. They're very intelligent because, uh, you know, if if you were to be taken, Oops. if you were to be taken, say, a couple hundred miles from your house, yeah, and dropped off on the street, do you think you'd make it home that day? Uh, probably not. Oops. So. See, this is why I'm not a fancier. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. So, but you can train them to do all those things, but you can't keep them off the city statues. Well, there's a little <laughs> different in lineage between between the you know the the common birds that are up and the, the feral birds that are up on the streets this, and that. This but. is really interesting. No, so. hey, you know what? I've I've never thought I'd hold a pigeon. They're so cool. So. Thank you very much, Greg Cap, uh, with the Fair Count uh, Association Fair pigeon, Count Asso pigeon Association. Pigeon Association. Yeah, I appreciate you coming in. And we're gonna uh, fly on over to. Are we flying over to? No, Sam's done with his stuff for the moment. I think we're going to break right now, but we'll be right back. Maybe we can get another look at these guys in a little bit too. Very good.